my dears, and welcome back to mine and Bertram's corner of the internet. Today is a Friday, Friday the 13th, no less. And today I've got a book talk video to share with you guys. And today we are talking about Hell House by Richard Matheson. Um, now if you've been around here for a while, you know that I love haunted house stories. I love ghost stories. And this is definitely one of the best I've ever read. So let's give you a little bit of setup here. Um, there's an old dying millionaire and he wants to know, he needs to know whether or not there is an afterlife. You know, even if the answer is no, he needs to know. So he hires three people offering them $100,000 if they will go and spend a week in this house and let him know one way or the other. So the three people who have been hired to go are um, Lionel Barrett, he is a physicist. So he goes and his wife as well because she's always accompanied him on his work. So she decides that she's gonna go as well. So that's the first. Second is Florence Tanner. She is a spiritualist and a psychic. And the third is Ben Fisher. He's also a psychic. And so this book takes place in 1970. And the thing about Ben Fisher is this isn't his first go around in Hell House. In 1940, when he was 15 years old, he had gone on an expedition in the house as well. Um, he has, at that time, when he was very young, he was widely regarded as the greatest psychic in the world. Um, he went in with a bunch of people to do some exploration in the house, and he was the only one to leave. All the rest died in the house. So now here it is, uh, 30 years later, and he's going back in. <laughs> when you're reading it, you're like, why are you going back in? And he's also kind of like, oh, why am I going back in? But there they go. So they're all, they've all been offered $100,000 to spend a week in this house, a house which, um, as described in the book, is widely regarded as the Mount Everest of haunted houses. A bit of history about this house is that it was owned by a man who inside that house conducted various activities just full of every perversion and that you can imagine de debauchery blasphemy all of it any horrible crazy thing you can think of to have happen or to be involved in happened inside this house and many many people over the years died um, within it most of them committing suicide so in these bunch go when they get there now before we continue you might be thinking to yourself if you read a lot of haunted house stories that this sounds an awful like an awful lot like the haunting of hill house written by shirley jackson and it does share a lot of the same premise a group of people hoping to conduct experiments and find answers go into a haunted house it's the same premise as the haunting of hill house um and i loved that book as well but i think if you're looking for what is scarier this one scares me more. Um, the first bit of the book is not too scary. It's just sort of setting up the history of the house, who's going in, why they're going in, everything like that. And then once you get to about the halfway mark, it begins to pick up. And once it does, it is impossible to put down. So when they first enter the house, the power is out. They have to spend the first night in the dark while they wait for um, someone from the millionaire's team to get a generator up and running. So that first night, you know, you're kind of waiting for the bad things to start happening, but they, they don't really. It kind of just, we start to feel the creepiness of the house. Um, there are rooms that some people can't enter, like um, Florence Tanner, she's the one that's the spiritualist and the psychic. There's a chapel in the house, but she finds that she can't go inside it, like she physically can't go in. Um, something is stopping her. And then just as time goes by, by the time day three in the house um, arrives, really strange things are starting to happen. People are getting physically harmed. Like one night during dinner, um, the physicist, Dr. Barrett, he and they're all around the table and all of a sudden the dishes and everything start 
um, attacking him because whatever is in the house so we're thinking there's tons of spirits the owner spirit as well as all the spirits of the many people who have died in the house they know that he's kind of there to um, because for Dr. Barrett, he's a little skeptical and he just, he thinks it's leftover energies and he just wants it cleared out. Whereas the two psychics, they're more inclined to believe that this energy that's in the house are ghosts and spirits. Whereas he's like, I don't, I don't think it's all, all of this nonsense. We just need it cleared out. Um, so the, the ghosts know this and they're kind of just attacking him with the dishes <laughs> and he ends up getting really cut on his finger, a bad injury there. His whole body is just black and blue. Um, then the next night, I believe, or later that same night, Florence is attacked by, like, her body's attacked by a spirit. Dr. Fisher... Um, Dr. Barrett, even though he saw what happened to him, he kind of dis... dis regards what happens to her saying that you know there must have been some version of herself some subconscious level that did this to herself although when you hear about her injuries you're like there's no way she did that to herself um and it's just just things start getting really dark and then two people are really affected uh, m mentally by the house and that's um florence tanner and the wife of dr barrett and her name is edith and what you begin to see is kind of that um, the Hell House is sort of bringing out everyone's deepest, darkest, most carnal desires. That part of yourself that you kind of repress and push aside, um, it's starting to bring it out in people, especially Dr. Barrett's wife. And she just really starts to lose it. And she starts to get very sexual and very um, aggressive with not just her husband, but Ben Fisher as well. And as we're reading, we seem to see that Ben seems to be the least affected by this house. And he thinks that it's because he's over it. Like, he, he doesn't care <laughs> what happens to this house or the spirits inside of it. He's kind of just shut off to it. Um, and so he thinks that's why he's not really being affected so much by the house, because he doesn't really give a crap. <laughs> So, yes, so it's just, I don't want to spoil the end because, um, let's just say not everyone makes it out of the house alive. Mm -hmm. Let's just say that. But, um, if you're looking for a great spooky read this October, I find October, like, the whole month of October, I don't want to read anything else but creepy stories. <laughs> and this one's great. And if you love haunted house stories, you're going to love this one, I really think. Um, I know some people criticized the ending, saying it was a bit anticlimactic, but I didn't find it that way. I thought it fit perfectly for with how I was enjoying the story, and yeah, it was just a great spooky read. So yeah, Hell House by Richard Matheson. The cool thing about Richard Matheson as well is he was a writer for The Twilight Zone. A lot of people regard him as one of the best writers for The Twilight Zone. He's also written a ton of other... Um, books like I Am Legend, uh, What Dreams May Come. Just really, really big fan of, of his. So now before we go, I thought I'd do a couple shout outs as I usually do on Fridays. The first one is to Franco is here. Um, Franco has uh, always been super supportive of my channel and I love watching what he puts up on his. He doesn't post a whole lot, but when he does, it's definitely worth the watch and I just love it. Um, so definitely go and check out his channel. I will link him down below. Next one is Sunshine Sotak. Hope I'm saying that right, dear. Um, she's got this great channel where she does a lot of hauls and makeup looks and things like that. And I just really love watching her content. The third is Abadabs. She is, I mean, you probably know of her already. I, I feel like if you don't, how have you not heard of her yet? She's got this great channel. She does a ton of unboxings. She's got this great personality. She's just so much fun to watch. And watching her videos feels like you're sitting across the table from a friend and you're just chatting, which is um, just my favorite way to feel when I'm watching your guys' videos. So, yes, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great weekend. On Monday, I'm going to have a review of the KL Polish Fall 2017 nail polishes, and I'll see you then. Bye, guys.